I'm going to demonstrate how I send out my weekly-ish Substack newsletter using content from my blog. So this is my blog. I update it two or three times a day usually. And then I have a weekly-ish newsletter um, with content from my blog, which you can subscribe to. And that's run entirely out of Substack. That's this Substack here. And the key thing about this newsletter is it only takes me a couple of minutes to compose because it's entirely content from my blog transposed into Substack. So I'll show how I do that. And then I'm going to talk through all of the various pipeline pieces under the hood that make that work. It all starts with this. This is an observable um, notebook I wrote a little while ago, which implements that um, it, it constructs my newsletter for me from that blog content. So you can see here, we it'll tell me it's been eight days since the last newsletter. There's a couple of big stories in there. Um, there's 12 links and five quotations and two notes. And what I can do on this page is I can adjust the order. I actually want to have the Gemini 3 Pro story as the top item in that. So I can drag that up and down. Um, I can scroll through, preview it. But really, the only button that matters here is copy rich text newsletter to clipboard. And the reason for that is that Substack does not have an API, but they do accept copy and paste. So I click that button. I go here. I hit paste and that's the newsletter. Um, there's only a couple of extra things I have to do manually. I need to set the title um, plus I normally go with a subtitle that features the second story. Um, there we go. Um, this all looks good to me. I'm going to scroll down. Um, there are a few things I have to watch out in here. Um, like uh, things like embedded videos might not display correctly. Only in this case Oh, so here, what's happened, if you look here, is that in the blog entry, um, in the entry for this, it talks about the Half Moon Bay City Council meeting. It does this. Substack unhelpfully turned that into a YouTube embed, and I don't actually want that. So what I can do is hit delete on that, and then in here, oh, that's so annoying, isn't it? Um, uh, I think, I'm not sure how to get Substack not to copy and paste like that. Um, let's copy this thing here. And what we can do is break it deliberately. So I'm going to do that up here. I'm going to stick in a space there. Now, if I paste in there, that did work. And then hopefully I can remove the space. There we go. Okay, so I fixed that problem quickly scrolling down here. All of this looks completely fine. Substack does a really nice job of things like um, handling pasted images. It pulls those into Substack as well. This is going to be quite a long newsletter. I always get this message saying post too long for email. And I always ignore it. Um, but all of this looks... Oh! See this? Animated GIF demo. Something went wrong here. Like this is supposed to be an image but it didn't show up as an image. Let's see if we can figure that out. That was animated um, demo. Oh, it's six terminal. Here we go. So it's supposed to be this here. What I'll do is I will copy that image and try pasting that into Substack and see what happens. There we go. That seems to have fixed it. Um, I do still want that. Uh... Okay, and you know what? I need the alt text that I wrote for this. And so I've actually got another tool I built just for sol solving this problem, alt text extractor. You can paste something in and it gives you a little copy button to get at the alt text, which is super useful for these kinds of operations. So I can hit there, I can hit add alt text. Oh, it looks to me like it already has the alt text. So that's good. We didn't need to do that. Um, scrolling down, this is all fine. This is fine. This is all fine as well. Um, I think we might be in good shape for this extremely long newsletter. There's a picture of a raccoon in a trash can. Um, this is good. So, I'm... These um, text areas often have an extra new line in them, which I have to clear out, which is frustrating. Um, but it's not the end of the world. Um, there we go. OK, this is... Oh, look, we've got one more of those bugs with, the, um, with that YouTube feature. So for that one, it was the 
anti-gravity. Here we go, it should have been this here. So what I'm going to do is I'll do that trick again where I finish halfway through the YouTube URL. And then copy in that too. So this should be it. That should, oh, and then I can delete this and delete that video result there. We're good. We are good. This is ready to send. So I hit um, continue at the top. Um, I'm always tag it with AI and I guess Gemini in this case. Um, and I like to tag it LLMs too. And you get to select a image to be displayed here. I'm going to go with that Pelican picture that Gemini 3 Pro made me. Click send to everyone now. Oh, it always bugs me about adding subscribe buttons, so sure, I guess so. But this is it. When I click send to everyone now, that has just sent out my newsletter. So as you can see, that took a few minutes longer than usual because I had to edit some of those YouTube things, but it's a pretty smooth process. Let's talk about how this thing actually works. So I showed you this um, observable notebook. Observable is a platform that lets you knock out little bits of JavaScript like this in an interactive interface, which can do all sorts of interesting, useful things against APIs. The key question here then is to how does that API work? Where is this content coming from? So if we scroll down to the bottom of the news, the um, newsletter, we, there's a whole bunch of implementation details, but the real magic is this bit here. So what I'm actually doing here is I'm doing an API request with fetch against JSON on my data set instance for my blog, which we'll talk about in a moment, passing in a SQL query called SQL. And that SQL query looks like this. This is a monster. Look at this thing. It's um, joining together tables from blog entry with my blog marks, my bookmarks, with my quotes, with my notes, and doing all of this stuff here to pull everything together and turn it into the data that's then used to render that page. I've even got... Um, I've even got it composing HTML in the SQL query, which is a horrifyingly gross thing to do. I kind of thought it was amusing, which is why I built it like this. Normally, I wouldn't use SQL for assembling HTML tags, but in this case, it does actually work pretty well. So what we're going to do now, let's take that SQL query, and it's this query here, and let's actually run that on the dataset instance for my blog. So as some background, my blog is a Django application. Um, I do all of my content editing in here. I can add links and quotes and all of that sort of stuff. Um, but I use dataset to power the API. Dataset works off of SQLite. Here we go. This is my dataset.simonwilson.net interface. I can drop this in. It's going to insist that I give it a number of days, let's say seven days. Hit run. And we can see that now running this query, it's actually showing me the very complex query plan. But here we go. This is the data that comes back from it. You can see I've got entries, I've got blog marks, I've got quotations, all of them formatted as HTML and ready for me to use in that newsletter. If you click on the .json link here, you can see this is the actual raw JSON that's coming back. So how does the data get from my Django app running on Heroku using Postgres into this data set app running SQLite um, on, I think this is on fly.io? Uh, the answer is I've got a GitHub repository called Simon Wilson Blog Backup, which runs on a, runs on a schedule and it exports the data from Heroku and imports it into JSON files and then into SQLite for me. That's this workflow here. So this is saying at 20, 20, once every two hours, at 26 minutes past the hour, um, do a whole bunch of setup stuff. And then the crucial thing is here. It runs a command called db to SQLite, which I wrote, um, which takes an argument that's the Heroku database URL. So this is the thing that tells Heroku, that, te that, that provides the, the um, connection string and the username and the password and all of the stuff you need to talk to um, to, to Postgres on Heroku. And it calls that and it says, I want you to turn that into a simonwilsonblog.db data, SQLite database with all of these different tables. So I get to list the tables that I want. DB to SQLite is this tool that I wrote a couple of, uh, seven years ago now. Um, and this just lets you say, 
DB2 SQLite, Postgres colon blah 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 blog.db. It does all of the work. So once every two hours, this thing runs. It extracts my Heroku database, turns it into SQLite, and then later on, it publishes that SQLite database to um, dataset running on fly. So it says dataset publish fly that blog.db with a bunch of metadata and it installs a bunch of plugins, and adds some extra options, does a whole bunch of bits and pieces. But you add all of this together and every two hours, this site here is updated with the latest copy of my database, which means that this JavaScript here can run SQL queries against that database and use those to compose the HTML, which I can then copy and paste into Substack. So there's a lot of pieces going on here. There's Django, there's Postgres and Heroku, there's GitHub Actions, there's DB to SQLite, which then publishes to fly.io, then there's JavaScript running an observable that gives me the copy and paste, and I paste that to Substack. And all of this digital duct tape, it just works. Like I very rarely have any problems with this. And the overall result is that I can publish my newsletter with a couple of clicks and it just takes me a few minutes. I really like this way of working. I love having a um, I love having all of these different moving parts that mostly don't really cost me much money either. Like Heroku is pretty inexpensive running single database. GitHub Actions is free. The fly.io hosting is a few dollars a month to, to keep this up and running. And Substack is free as well. But it means that I can send out this newsletter every, every week or so with all of that content from my blog. And I really don't have to think very hard about how it works now that I've got it all set up. I'll be posting extra notes to accompany this video on my blog, so I'll link to all of the files and the things that I've shown you. Um, but yeah, this is uh, sort of, it's a great example of how I like to work with respect to all of these different bits and pieces of infrastructure that I have running spread around all sorts of different services.